वेलकम अगेन फ्रेंड इन दिस ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन थर्मोडाइनमिक्स दिस इज लेक्चर टू इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव स्टडीड इंट्रोडक्शन टू थर्मोडाइनमिक्स सिस्टम सराउंडिंग एंड बाउंड्री एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल कवर थर्मोडाइनमिक प्रॉपर्टीज थर्मोडाइनमिक इक्लिब्रियम स्टेट पाथ एंड प्रोसेस आफ्टर दैट वी विल ऑल्सो टेक सम मल्टी ऑब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन दिस कंटेंट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द लेक्चर इन द लास्ट लेक्चर we have studied that thermodynamics is a branch of science which deals with the interaction of energy by a system and its effect on the properties of a system so what is the meaning of the term properties of a system the properties of a system means characteristics of a system which provide some information about the system let's take a example for example this is our system and what are the characteristics of this system which provide some information about this system for example the color of this system is yellow it means yellow color is the characteristics of this system as it provide some information about this system if this system has some specific type of smell then the smell will also the characteristics of this system so smell will also be the characteristics of this system the system also occupy some volume in space therefore the value of the volume is also the characteristics of this system so volume is also the characteristics of this system similarly the area mass temperature and pressure are also the characteristics of this system so all these are the characteristics of this system and the property is nothing but characteristics of a system however the only measurable characteristics of a system is known as thermodynamic properties the measurable characteristics it is very important because in thermodynamics for defining state the property must have fixed value we will discuss this point later that what is the meaning of state in thermodynamics but thermodynamic properties are only measurable characteristics of a system so these are the measurable characteristics of this system so these are the thermodynamic property however these two cannot be measured so these are not measurable characteristics of this system so they are not thermodynamic property the thermodynamic properties of a system can be classified into two categories first is extensive properties and second is intensive properties extensive properties are those properties which depend upon the mass or extent of the system so extensive properties depend upon the mass or extent of the system the examples of extensive properties are mass volume area energy enthalpy etc and intensive properties are those properties which do not depend upon the mass or extent of the system so intensive properties do not depend upon the mass or extent of the system the example of intensive properties are temperature pressure thermal conductivity etc it has been observed that the student are always confused between the extensive and intensive property if you want to avoid such type of confusion you have to remember that the word extensive is made from the word extent which mean size so extensive properties are those properties which depend upon the size of the system generally extensive properties are denoted by capital letter or upper case letter and intensive properties are denoted by small letter however mass is the exception in the extensive property and temperature and pressure are exception in intensive properties apart from extensive and intensive properties there is another category of properties that is specific properties if we define extensive property per unit mass it is known as specific property the example of specific properties are specific volume specific enthalpy specific energy the specific volume is defined as volume per unit mass of the system similarly the specific enthalpy is defined as enthalpy per unit mass of the system and the specific energy is the energy per unit mass of the system the specific properties are also denoted by the lower case letters or small letters and you have to remember that specific properties are also do not depend on the mass or extent of the system so specific properties is the special case of intensive properties let's take pressure which is an intensive property 
stressor is defined as force upon area and force is mass into acceleration so if we look into the formula of pressure the pressure is depend upon the mass of the system so how it is an intensive property so to resolve this problem let's do a exercise let's consider a room and this room is filled with air so air is our system and this is our system boundary let's take some properties of this system so these are the properties of this system where m is the mass of air for this system similarly v is the volume t is the temperature rho is density p is pressure and mu is viscosity now we want to identify which properties are extensive and which properties are intensive for this we divide this system into two part by an imaginary boundary the size of the both sides are same so we divide our system into two equal parts now let's see the effect on the properties of this partition mass is divided into two equal parts because it is an extensive property similarly the volume is also divided into two equal parts however the value of temperature t remain constant for each side because it is an intensive property you can also visualize this situation by considering the room in which you are sitting right now and if you divide the room into two equal parts by an imaginary boundary the mass and volume become half for the each side but the temperature remains same on the both side because it does not depend upon the extent of the system or size of the system similarly the value of density pressure and viscosity are also unchanged so they are intensive properties so with this approach you can easily find out whether properties are extensive or intensive and you don't have to bother with the situation like that if you closely observe this formula you will find out there is an extensive property in the numerator which is mass m and there is also an extensive property in the denominator which is a area and the ratio of two extensive property is an intensive property that's why pressure is an intensive property we have also seen in this the pressure is intensive property as i already said you don't need to bother with the formulas you can simply find out whether properties are extensive or intensive by this approach now move to the next topic which is thermodynamic equilibrium the thermodynamics always deals with the system in equilibrium equilibrium means there are no unbalanced force on the system or within the system a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium if it is in thermal equilibrium mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium let's see what is the meaning of these different type of equilibrium so first take the thermal equilibrium a system is said to be in thermal equilibrium if the temperature is same throughout the system which means there is no driving force for the heat flow next is mechanical equilibrium a system is said to be in mechanical equilibrium if there is no unbalanced force within the system which means pressure remains same for entire system the next is chemical equilibrium a system is said to be in chemical equilibrium if there is no chemical reactions occur within the system and the chemical composition remains same throughout the system so if all the above conditions are satisfied then a system is said to be in thermodynamic equilibrium let's move to the another topic that is the state the unique set of properties of a system is known as the state let's clarify this statement with an example consider a piston cylinder arrangement in which some gas is filled so gas inside the cylinder is our system and this system is in thermal equilibrium and we want to define its state according to the definition we require some property of this system to describe the state we can easily define some properties of this system by using a specific type of measuring device for example we can measure the temperature with the help of thermometer similarly we can measure pressure volume and its mass and with the help of major property we can calculate the other properties which are not too easy in measurement like density 
So we have value of mass and volume. So we can easily calculate the density for this system. Similarly, we can also calculate the value of enthalpy and entropy from their thermodynamic relations. So we have a set of properties for this system and this set of properties define state for this system. We have already assumed that the system is in thermodynamic equilibrium. So these properties are not going to change and for particular state the set of properties is unique. If the value of even single property changes, the state will change. So we have defined the state. Now move to the another topic which is path and process. Let's consider again a piston cylinder arrangement in which some gas is filled and the volume and temperature of this gas is 2 meter cube and 20 degree centigrade respect. So we have two properties of this system which are sufficient to describe the state of this system. The question may comes in your mind how only two properties are sufficient to describe the state of this system. I will discuss this in detail in the topic state postulate in our upcoming lectures. But these two properties are sufficient to describe the state of the system. Let's plot the state of this system on the temperature versus volume diagram. System has volume 2 meter cube and temperature 20 degree centigrade. So our state will be like here. For this state, system has unique set of properties and the values of two properties are known. And the value of other property can be calculated by using thermodynamic relations. Since this system is in equilibrium, the properties remain constant, which means properties are not going to change. If the value of even one property changes, the state of the system will change. In this example, the volume of the gas decreased to 1 meter cube. However, the temperature remained constant. Since the value of property change, it means the state of the system will change. So our new state lies at V is equal to 1 meter cube and T is equal to 20 degree centigrade. So due to change in the volume, the state of the system has been changed. And this changing of system state from one equilibrium state to another is called process. So changing of state from 1 to 2 is known as process. So whenever a process occur, the system change its state. However, the process cannot be occur instantaneously. For example, the system volume cannot reduce from 2 meter cube to 1 meter cube directly or suddenly. It first reduced to the value of 1.9, then 1.8, then 1.7 and finally it reached to the value 1 meter cube which is our final state. So the series of states through which a system passes during a process is called path of the process. So these are the series of states through which a system passes during a process or during a changing of state. And this is known as path of the process. Based on the specific path followed by a system during a changing of state, process can be classified as isothermal process in which temperature remain constant. In the previous example, we have seen that during changing of state, the temperature remain constant. So that type of process is known as isothermal process because temperature remain constant during the process. Similarly, a process in which pressure remain constant is known as isobaric and the process in which volume remain constant is known as isochoric. And the process in which heat transfer is not allowed or in which heat transfer is zero is known as adiabatic process. Now let's move to the another topic which is cyclic and non-cyclic processes. A cycle is defined as a series of processes. Let's take a temperature versus entropy diagram and draw some series of processes such that the end state is identical to the initial state. So for the cyclic process, the final state must be identical with the initial state. So this is the initial state of this cycle and the final state is identical to the initial state. It means the initial and final state are same. The process 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 is a cyclic process. However, the process 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3 and 1, 2, 3, 4 are non-cyclic processes because in this 
the initial state and the final state are not identical. Now let's take some multi-objective questions based on the present lecture. Thank you.